Welcome back to the K-High Afternoon News. Good afternoon. I am Casey Freela. Pleased to be joined by Congressman Tom McClintock here on K-High Radio. Tom, thanks for being with us on another busy news day. Um, I just kind of want to pick up, unfortunately, where we left off last time. You and I had talked a little bit about this Mueller report, and now I was just reading an article uh, that the White House is pushing back against a, a slew of Russian probe-related document requests from Democrats on Capitol Hill uh, basically accusing the chairman of the House Judiciary Committee of seeking to duplicate Special Counsel Mueller's investigation for political gain. It just seems to me that there are so many more important things going on on the world stage. W- w- what do you make of this this Democratic obsession with the Mueller report? You also had an, an excellent write-up on your website at uh, mcclintock.gov that people can read talking about this very issue. M- M- mcclintock.house.gov. Excuse me. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry, Tom. <laughs> I apologize. I got I got stories everywhere. Yes, let's get that right. <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, uh, uh, this is what the Democrats have decided to focus on. The American people gave them the majority of the House uh, uh, with the promise they were going to do all sorts of wonderful things, and all they're doing is obsessing on Donald Trump. I mean, it comes down to that. Yeah, you, and you've talked about, I mean, the bottom line is a good, a large portion of this report is out there, and it seems like the obsession both in the media and, and perhaps up there you know, while, while you're working is on a few lines of copy that, that aren't in there. It, it just, again, it seems like a, a colossal waste of time considering a lot of other both national and world issues that are, that are going on right now. Well, I, I hate to sound cynical, but I think it's very carefully calculated. What they're asking for the uh, attorney general to release is what the law forbids him to release. It's grand jury testimony of, of, uh, and it's information that is part of ongoing criminal investigations. And you know in a heartbeat, if he did respond to their subpoena, he would have to break the law. And if he broke the law, you know within, within a New York minute they would be filing criminal referrals against him for violating uh, uh, grand jury testimony uh, confidentiality and obstructing justice by releasing information part, uh, that compromised ongoing criminal investigations. And I, I don't know this, I'm just speculating, but uh, it wouldn't surprise me if among those criminal investigations involve uh, crimes committed by uh, senior FBI officials uh, in propagating uh, this this hoax uh, that uh, uh, has dominated uh, our our country's attention now and torn it apart for the last two and a half years that somehow uh, Donald Trump was uh, colluding with Vladimir Putin to, to um, uh, uh, affect the election. And we now know that was based entirely on a uh, dossier that the FBI knew was phony, but used it anyway. And crimes were uh, likely committed by uh, senior FBI officials, and I cannot uh, imagine that that uh, the criminal investigations are not going on right now. Well said. Um, do you think that? It, I mean, is this going to be? I mean, are we going to be having the same conversation in a month? Do you, do you foresee perhaps the ability of, of those on the other side to move on and get to things that may be a little bit more and clear and pressing as far as? You know, I mean, we can pick a, a slew of issues, whether it's the, the stock market, the China uh, trade issue, uh, the th- tension in Iran, or is this just kind of the norm that, that people should expect to see uh, when uh, they turn on their local news? I'm afraid it has become the norm, and, I, and I'll, uh, I'll tell you why. We had a hearing today on uh, on the uh, doctrine of executive privilege, and it was, you know, it, you hear, uh, you heard, oh, this is a constitutional crisis. Well, it's not a constitutional crisis at all. Constitutional crisis is where you have a dispute that our constitutional institutions cannot resolve. Uh, our institutions can resolve this impasse uh, completely and quickly. Uh, the the uh, uh, president is claiming executive privilege over certain uh, documents uh, uh, that um, cannot be released uh, under law. Uh, the um, uh, Congress is claiming, or the House is claiming, its uh, oversight responsibilities allow them su- to subpoena that. That's a dispute between the two branches. That's been going on since the Constitution was adopted. There's a simple way of resolving it. You take it to court. The Democrats won't take it to court, and the reason is they know uh, uh, that the uh, uh, law is on the side of the administration. So they want their issue. They know the information they're seeking cannot be legally released. Um, uh, they're uh, uh, going to continue to press this in the legislative branch uh, uh, so that they can claim that there's a cover-up going on. They will not seek to resolve it through the courts because they know the law is not on their side. That's what it comes down to. 
And and just not to keep you know harboring on the point, but it seems like they're trying for a victory in the court of public opinion, which doesn't really matter. I mean, twenty twenty elections will decide you know who's in power, and it, it's so frustrating. Again, where there's a lot of other things that feel like they should be more readily addressed. I know you've got plenty of things that you'd like to talk about that that could be addressed here well, immediately, but instead you're tied up with this nonsense. Don't forget the same judiciary committee is responsible for uh, immigration uh, reform and a great immigration policy. We have more than 100,000 illegal immigrants crossing the border every month that we know of. Uh, and uh, and yet the only thing they seem to be interested in that regard is legalizing those who have already entered our country illegally, which of course then attracts more people to come across illegally with the same promise of legalization. We're speaking with Congressman Tom McClintock here on K High. I've been reading a little bit about uh, Iran and, and perhaps that Congress or some members of Congress uh, are going to be meeting with uh, let's see both parties in both chambers, including both intelligence committees, to talk about the Middle East. Um, I guess the, what brought this up is the U.S. ordered its non-emergency government staff to leave Iraq, citing a quote increased threat stream in the region. That was from Fox News. Uh, Trump administration officials this week are warning of rising threats. Two Americans from forces backed by neighboring Iran and deploying warships and B-52 bombers to the Gulf. I don't believe we've touched on Iran in, in quite some time. A- anything you can add to, to that news story or anything that you've heard uh, yet? Well, yes. I mean, uh, 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 Iran is the biggest threat to peace in the Middle East. It's the biggest uh, threat to I- Israel. Uh, it, it is now threatening its Arab neighbors, including Saudi Arabia. Um, uh, uh, and the only and, and is uh, uh, on the threshold of acquiring nuclear weapons if they haven't already, uh, and they've made no secret when they acquire them and the delivery capabilities they will use them against Israel. The only way to stop that, short of a major war, is for the collapse of the Iranian regime from within. Uh, the Iranian regime was propped up by the Obama administration, including sending hundreds of millions of dollars of cash on cargo pallets in U.S. Air Force cargo planes uh, to prop up the regime in Tehran. Uh, those days are now over with the Trump administration. Not only are we not sending uh, cash on pallets to the uh, uh, mullahs, we have uh, finally reimposed sanctions. Those sanctions are having a major effect now on Iran. It is bringing the regime back to the point of collapse. Uh, there is a thriving uh, uh, freedom movement within Iran. Uh, if we're able to... to uh, um, uh, accomplish that, get the Iranian regime to collapse from within, uh, we don't have to worry about uh, a major war to resolve this issue. Well, it's another busy week in Washington. Tom, I'll always appreciate a few moments of your time. We've been visiting with Congressman Tom McClintock here on KHI. Thank you so much, Tom, and we'll look forward to visiting again real soon. Thanks again, Casey. Take care. We'll take a quick break and be right back here on KHI.